what a way to start Sunday. Uh, Sunday of the round of 32 started in very much the same way that Saturday of the round of 32 ended with a fantastic back and forth matchup between a, a Pac-12 school and a Big E school for a spot in the Sweet 16. Uh, this one ended the same way that the other one did with the Big E school eking out a win, uh, a close win in this case. Uh, there was no second overtime blowout, but back and forth, two tough-nosed programs with two tough, hard-nosed coaches. And it, it, was, it was just, it was one of those ways, I think, one of the best types of like continuity games we've had in a tournament in recent years where night one of a round ended fantastic and you don't really have that hangover with a with a poor matchup uh to start the next day i'm connor hope from heat check cbb joined by subi from theater and college hoops uh for the sleepers media network where we're doing previews and recaps for every game of march madness this colorado marquette game subi was i thought it was heading to overtime like that that's how back and forth this game was Marquette was just able to to hold Colorado off. You know, what are your thoughts as as a fan of a, a dying Pac-12 program? Uh, what are your thoughts about this this Big East Pac-12? The last two, but this one in particular. Last two games were awesome. Gutted as a Pac-12 guy to see the Big East come out victorious in both of those. I was thinking to myself, Connor, and I love that you have this same thought, but I was like, had we known we were going to get such great games between Creighton and Oregon and Marquette and Colorado in some pie in the sky world, I, I was like, oh, man, I kind of wish we got a Big East Pac-12 challenge or something earlier this season before the Pac-12 uh, evaporates into the sky. But what a ball game this was. So much fun back and forth. I have to credit both. Well, I was going to say I'll credit Oregon, but I'll really credit and follow Dante and Jermaine Kuznard. But I also want to credit really Colorado, right? For both of those teams fighting back, but Colorado in the second half down double digits heading into the locker room. And then Tristan De Silva just says, I'm not going out like this. And he showed up. KJ Simpson was tremendous. They really started heating up from three Connor. And that's what made this game competitive. Cause Marquette was getting anything and everything that they wanted in the first half. I think they only missed one two pointer in the first half. The offense was clicking. It was very efficient. And I think if you look a little deeper, Marquette in the first half was getting out in transition. It wasn't like they were running amazing sets in the half court. They were turning Colorado over and getting out in transition and getting easy layups at the rim. That changed a little bit because in the second half, because Colorado's three ball started falling and we're going to get into some of the other details and the nitty gritty, but really at a high level, just a competitive ball game that featured a superstar in college basketball. And that's Tyler Kolek and kind of want to get your thoughts on the game and also Kolek. But first I just have to apologize to him and Marquette because I picked Western Kentucky over Marquette. Uh, mostly because I thought we could get a fourth straight year of a 15 over two. And I had some slight questions about how they're going to reintegrate Kolek after being on the sidelines for a couple weeks. But that's why Shaka Smart is a head coach. And I'm over here on the couch with my hand in the chip bag watching him because he knew what he was doing, keeping Kolek out of the Big East tournament. He was tremendous against Western Kentucky, especially in the second half. Tremendous against Colorado all game. Yeah, I mean, I, coming into the the tournament, I had Tyler Kolek as one of my guys who was going to really define how this tournament went. And, and it was it came down to his health, right? Whether he was going to be fully healthy or not. 19 and a half points average between the two games, 11 assists in each game, five and a half rebounds between the two games, uh, one and a half steals. He's shooting like 17 to 27 from the floor uh, across both games. This game... If you're going to nitpick, uh, the six turnovers wasn't great, but Colorado was just playing in your face defense. And he shot two of five from three against Western Kentucky. I could have sworn he made a three in this game. It seemed like everyone from Marquette was making clutch threes down the stretch. He didn't make a three, but he really, especially when Cam Jones had to go out with that foul trouble, Tyler Kolek really just started taking over this game. He hit a shot over Eddie Lampkin. That was pretty clutch, pretty important. Like th this is a... a a player who perfectly encapsulates and perfectly reflects what his coach wants his players to be, which is just tough, hard-nosed, do what you need to do to win. 
And that's what he did in this game. I think he is going to be a really tough out. I mean, they get uh, it's it's NC State uh, in the next round. Right. And so um, that I don't want to call it a warm up, but I, I think Tyler Kolek is, is going to have another big game uh, before the potential matchup against like a, a Houston uh, in in the following round, a Houston or a Duke. I think would give him a pretty good game. Um, but this Marquette team is looking, looking tough enough to be a final four team. And I don't know if we could have said that about Marquette uh, prior to this season. So uh, hats off to Tyler Kolek. The other player I was really impressed with in this game. And I think we've seen, we've seen a player grow up in five games or five days, I guess three games in five days. But but Cody Williams in that first game for Colorado couldn't get stay on the floor. He he was awful in that game for Colorado uh in the in the first four against Boise State. Last game, he looked better. He looked better. This game, he really grew up. I was impressed with Cody Williams. I know he missed the free throw late in that game that could have put Colorado in a better position to win to take the lead but again he's a freshman not gonna really fault him for one missed free throw if you look at the rest of it though zero points in the first game nine points in the last game 12 points on 50 percent from the field 50 percent from three uh with two blocks in this game and that was really i think the story in this game was that colorado was making shots tough for marquette uh, they only had three blocks, but there were a couple of other a couple of other shots that they altered um, that, you know, a, a team that's not as tough as them probably lets in, probably lets off a better look. Uh, but your thoughts on on Cody Williams, because I think if he returns for Colorado next year, I mean, and they make the tournament, he's the type of player that I could see uh, becoming a March star in the future. I like Cody Williams. I do. And I think it's unfair. Some of the criticism he's received because he's been often injured. I think he basically broke his face at one point during the season. It's just been a bit of a disjointed season for him from a health perspective, but if you can't see the potential and why he's tabbed as one of the best college prospects, like American college prospects for the NBA, I I almost don't know what to tell you because he's so long. He can, get to the rim. He has a pretty decent mid range game that needs improvement. Like there's a lot that needs improvement, but the potential is certainly there. And I was glad to see him take some steps here uh, in, in a big stage. So I like Cody Williams and I, I just think it's lazy Connor. When I see people saying this, this guy's supposed to be a top five pick. This guy's supposed to be a top 10 pick. It's like, yeah, he's, he's pretty damn good. All right. He might throw up a stinker here and there, but he's also a freshman. Like you alluded to, it's been a disjointed season. Like I alluded to, but it was nice to see him be aggressive. Um, I actually thought from a personnel standpoint, what hurt the buffs and I'm not putting the blame on him because I love this player. And when he is performing in March, he's must watch TV. I've seen him throttle Arizona when he was on TCU and I'm talking about Eddie Lampkin. So I want to make sure he gets his flowers, but Eddie Lampkin didn't have a great game today, Connor. He turned the ball over too much in the first half. And I thought he was trying to be like Nikola Jokic with some of his passes where a cutter was going to the hoop and the lane was not available to make a pass with the except unless you were number 15 on the Denver Nuggets. Like Jokic could make that pass. I don't know if any other NBA players, let alone Andy Lampkin, could make that pass. And that contributed to Marquette getting turnovers and getting out in transition. So I was, uh, I'm a little sad for Eddie Lampkin. I don't think he had the best game uh, in, in a must win scenario. And, and some of those turnovers were just from lazy passes. So from a personal standpoint, I was uh, very proud of Cody Williams, but Eddie Lampkin, I kind of wish he had a, a a better performance in what could potentially be his last game. Last thing on Cody Williams, I personally don't see him coming back. I think his value is a little too high right now as it relates to the draft class. And I think it's actually a relatively weak draft class. I could be wrong there, but I don't see him coming back. But if he does, yes, man, uh, Colorado is going to be a force to be reckoned with yet again.
Eddie Lampkin, uh, he made some questionable decisions in this game. Was still the teams or the teens and the games leading rebounder. Um, you could say he held Igadaro to one board. Uh, the the Co- Colorado, I think, did everything they could to win. Right, they they won the battle on the boards. Would you believe it if I told you that Tyler Kolek might have been an eleven assist guy, but Colorado finished the game with more dimes than Marquette did? Wow, I would they, not believe you. They were sharing the ball. Hadley had five. O'Brien had four. Simpson had seven. Uh, two apiece for De Silva and Lampkin. Like they were just, they were sharing the ball, trying to get the best shots. At the end of the day, they just didn't make them. And when you're going up against a team that, for as good as your defense had looked, as aggressive as it was, as many turnovers as it forced, as many steals and blocks as it got, when your opponent shoots 62% from the field, 43% from three, uh, and the game isn't slowing down with with fouls and free throws to get them out of that rhythm, you're not winning many basketball games. And uh, I said it before the game, the weakest unit on the floor was Colorado's defense, particularly their shot defense. And I think that played out in this game. They, they just gave up, and some of them were tough makes, but some of them were open makes, and they just gave up too much uh to marquette uh there are a couple of shots i think marquette wanted back because they were really good looks that just didn't go down um but you know kolik played well cam jones i mentioned he was he went out with foul trouble came back into the game and played well down the stretch with the fouls uh he was probably the best player in this game until he went out with the fouls it's so oh. it's so crazy, Connor, because he's not a bit all Big East team member. So you're like, wow, how did this? How did this little little old kid, you know, this inspirational story, this uh, no name player play so well? <laughs> so of course I'm poking fun at that, but yeah, I I agree. And and Connor, the the margins are so thin. That's what's fascinating about these games. The mar- these games in the tournament, the margins are so dang thin. I talked about the turnovers about with Colorado in the first half, and you talk about how efficient Marquette was from inside the arc. They, this is a game that Colorado lost by four. Okay, and there's two big shots that I think you alluded to, but are worth specifying and highlighting one more time. Cody Williams had a wide open three. KJ Simpson had a wide open three. They missed on both of them. Again, that's not to say they played poorly. Sometimes you just miss, but man, I promise you they will be thinking about those two missed wide open threes, potentially all off season, because I think the KJ one may have given them the lead. Cody may have given them the lead or a tie and they were as good as looks as you're ever going to get. Colorado went down two possessions was making everything. And early in the game, in the second half, I guess, middle of the second half, when they had an opportunity to take the lead, they were making a bunch of those shots. I felt like Colorado maybe made one shot in that second half with the opportunity to extend the lead. Um, They just, it it seemed like as they were getting into more important shots in terms of extending the lead and possibly winning the game, it tightened up a little bit. Uh, But credit to Marquette. I mean, Marquette's, defense played well there were a couple of i think breaks for colorado given how well marquette was playing defense in those situations uh particularly uh i think it was was it cody williams who got fouled um where he was kind of like he he should have backed it out uh was this on the broken play like where kj simpson had to go into the backcourt yeah something like that yeah um and he he didn't back it out, but he also didn't attack the basket. He kind of like went across the top of the paint, uh, got fouled. I think it was by I think it was by Ross. Um, and uh, and that I mean, that was just it was like it was those little it's it's a game of like two or three breaks. And that yeah. was one of those breaks that you're just if you're Colorado, you're looking at that and, and you understand it's a young player, uh, but you're just looking at that going, OK, like. There are there are changes that could have been made at the end of the day, Colorado went two and one in the NCAA tournament 
with a team that was on the bubble, uh, didn't win either of its conference titles, uh, really went under the radar for most of the season. Uh, and then to come out and beat Boise State, to come out again and win the follow-up game, uh, and then to go against Marquette, a top eight team in the country, or a top, I guess, 10 team in the country, um, and uh, to to beat, to have leads against them and beat them on the boards, share the ball better than they did down the stretch. Uh, that's a big, that's a big accomplishment for a team like Colorado, who I think many people discount. I had them losing in the first four. Like many people discounted them. Uh, maybe it's because they were in the Pac-12. Maybe it was because they weren't the the team everyone thought they could be for most of the season. But kudos to kudos to Colorado. Kudos to Marquette on to the Sweet 16. They get to watch the remaining seven games from the locker room, knowing that they are in. And uh, kudos to the Pac-12. They put up a good showing. I know there is, uh, what, one Pac-12 team left? Two. Yeah. No, one. No, just yeah, one. Because, well, and, and that's the thing, Connor. In all of the losses for the Pac 12, they were all very valiant yeah. efforts. Oregon loses in double overtime. We saw what happened with Colorado here. And then Wazoo, they put up a really good fight against Iowa State. So the remaining team is is Arizona. And when you talk about these Pac-12 teams, sorry, I'll, I'll wrap it up here, Connor. But when you talk about these Pac-12 teams, I think Colorado is a good example of maybe Oregon to an extent, but Colorado is a good example of you're a really solid team in that conference. How do you match up against a solid team in a better from a better conference? And I think the SEC is playing poorly, I suppose, on the whole in the tournament, but Florida is a, a solid team from what I consider a better conference in the SEC and Colorado needed a game winner to beat them. Florida easily could have won that game. Like that Colorado versus Florida, it's deadlocked. And then when you match Colorado up against an elite team from a really good conference in the big East, these are the margins that matter. And you see that kind of loss. So like, I don't know, I guess the point that I'm making is when you see a team like Colorado, stacked up against some of these others, they, they fell in that tier where you would expect them to fall. And then lastly about Marquette 15 and 0 when leading by double digits at halftime, uh, do not get down double digits going into the locker room against the golden Eagles. You won't win the basketball game. And then Marquette super balanced from their starters. I think all five of them scored in double figures. Yeah. Super balanced uh, for a team that struggled making free throws down the stretch until the big East tournament. And I had alluded that to that in the preview made the made the free throws that the few free throws that uh, happened in this game uh they made the important ones down the stretch um they they are a good team i do not i do not envy any team that has to play them uh going down the stretch obviously we mentioned their next game will be against nc state an upstart nc state that just had a really tough game against oakland uh and you know I'm not saying it's a guarantee for Marquette, but the way they're playing um, with with Kentucky out, uh, with what we know about the remaining four teams on the other side of the bracket in that region, like you have to start talking about Marquette as, you know, maybe not the favorite because you still got Houston, but like a really, cl a really close second to Houston in terms of the chances to make a final four. Without a doubt. I, the, the, Gas has to run out on NC State at some point, right? Like you right? think that you think right? that, and, and the the teams look the teams that we thought the gas would run out on. Um, the only one where it really did was Duquesne. Like I was yep. not excited for that NC State Oakland game because uh, you thought the gas was going to run out, uh, and it didn't for either team. So NC State has four days off. Like Marquette's going to get a tough game right. against DJ Burns. It's just going to happen. Uh, and they have to, and they have to figure out how to, how to accomplish that. Of course, we will have the preview for that and everything else in the sweet 16 coming up this week. Uh, but you know, I need to pay some bills. I need to make Greg happy. I need to do an ad read. So, uh, if you're still in the hunt for a sports book to call home, bet a nonstop, bet the nonstop action of March madness with my bookie. They have everything you need from straight Brett bets to props 
odds boosts, and more. Whatever your style, my bookie makes it easy to play your way and get paid. Sign up now and take advantage of our generous welcome offer to score a massive first deposit bonus of up to $1,000. All you have to do is claim promo code SLEEPERS, that's S-L-E-E-P-E-R-S, but the fun doesn't stop there. Get up to the minute odds, free bets, and expert predictions to help you decide who to put your money on. The best part about my bookie, you can bet on anything, anytime, from anywhere. Use promo code SLEEPERS to secure your limited time welcome bonus today. It's It was a great game. Thanks, Subi, for joining me for the recap. I'm Connor Ho from Heat Check CBB. He's Subi from uh, Theater in College Hoops. We're going to be covering some games coming up. Maybe it's you and I for the Arizona game coming up this week. Uh, make sure you stay tuned on the Sleepers Media Network. Until next time, we'll see you.